Been very busy recently, it's nice to get out for an evening, watch the sunset, watch the clouds, listen to the birds, and relax looking into the flames of a stick fire. Been cooking on sticks for about 20 years. Started when I improvised, and then over the years I developed my own little grates. Talking with the Free Range Network recently, we thought, why don't we actually publish the designs for a, a free build it yourself grate? And so we had a little think and this is what we came up with. Cost just less than £10 if you buy the, the parts from a DIY superstore. And we've put all the designs and the instructions for how to build it in this, this handout which is available from the, the Free Range Activism website. The grate's made from three things, angled galvanised steel, threaded rod and 24 nuts. Angled steel, any old lightweight angled steel will do, galvanised is better. Threaded rod, a little bit harder to get from skips. Nuts, any old nuts to fit your threaded rod will do. Here's the design. There's no dimensions on this because the idea is you, you fit it to your saucepans, whatever size you want to make it. The issue is, it needs to be about 10 centimetres off the ground. Begin by marking up your steel, holes and lines. Very important to have square lines. Now if you have an engineering square, fine, if not, any old square card or railway ticket will do. Threaded rod, difficult to mark up because it's a spiral, just pick a little spot that's the right distance and mark it for cutting. I'm using an old toolbox which has a little V cut into it. Note how I keep the blade below my thumb, we don't want to slice thumbs off doing this. And Keeping it tight up beneath your thumb allows you to steady the blade and cut more easily. You cut from one edge to the middle, when you get to the middle, you turn it, and then you carry on. If you try and cut through the whole thing at once, it's difficult to keep it exactly straight and stable and you never make such a good job as doing it in two pieces. Turn away, and boom, off it goes. Very important when you've cut your pieces of metal to finish them with a file. It's not to make them look neat and tidy, it's because cutting it makes some very sharp edges. And if you don't finish it, then you're likely to cut your scratches on top seriously if you accidentally lean or, or rub up against the grate. So, file off, round off the edges, give it a good going over of a file. Give it a feel with your fingers. It doesn't have to be a, a beautiful job, just feel with your fingers and make sure there's no sharp edges. The threaded rod is harder to cut. You put a nut either side of the cut, cut through the middle, and then undo the nut, because when you cut it, you're going to damage the thread, and undoing the nut fixes the thread again. Here's all the pieces cut. I haven't drilled the holes yet. That comes next. But you can see all the pieces of the, the grate laid out. I'm using a pillar drill, uh, nice and quick. Uh, if you use a power drill, you'll need to use something to stop it skidding everywhere or drill a pilot hole. It's all explained in the handout. So here are all the drilled parts ready for assembly. I begin with the hinges. Uh, the hinges are the shorter of the two lengths. Put the two sides on and then do up two more nuts either side. Now the nuts lock together either side of the metal and create a hinge. You see here, adjusting the nut, get it just the right distance, and then put another nut on the outside. Oops! Now we're going to lock the nuts together. Locking the nuts together means that they don't move. So you get two spanners or a spanner and pliers, twist them towards each other and they won't move. Now do up the inside nuts, and again, lock them together, makes a nice tight hinge. There we are, that's one end of the finished hinges, now I'll do the same at the other end. Next, we put the, the base section in. Now, notice how I've got the nuts, because it has to go all the way through and then go back in itself. Put 
nuts either side and knock off one end and do the other end. This is quite difficult because you have to slowly bend the metal as you push it out by tightening the nut outwards and in the end lock the nuts together at the, air, at the other end and it holds it as a nice trapezoid shape. It's not going to go anywhere. Nice and stable to hold your grater. Of course doing that you've got a little bit of metal that sticks up. That's quite sharp. So what you do, get some pliers, bend it around your studding and there you can see it makes a nice flat surface so it stands without being unstable. So final test, take the sides, fold them inwards and if you've got it nicely cut they should just meet in the middle like this one. If you want them, if you want a longer grate no problem at all, it just has to be about 10 centimeters off the ground. Final load test, stand it down, give it a good bang, all nice and steady. Great finished. Here are the, I got these two saucepans in a sale recently, which is why I had to make myself a new grate. And here they are in use outdoors. There's an art to lighting fires, and it, it's purely a matter of practice of actually getting out and doing it. Now I'm doing this in grass and you would make a scorch mark if you just lit the fire on grass. So I begin cutting a square of turf out about five centimetres deep, cut a rectangle, lever up one corner and then use the knife to slowly cut away underneath to remove the live part of the turf. And what you do is you expose the subsoil so that when you light your fire you're not actually damaging the, the soil, the turf, because you've taken away the, the live skin of the earth, so to speak. I've collected some grass from out of the hedge, some old hogweed sticks, chop them up small, heap them in a heap. Now I've got some very thin sticks that I'm going to add to that. Thin because they burn more quickly. So when you start your fire, the grass goes first. So that will set fire to the thin sticks. Then I finish off with some bigger sticks. And now my fire is all ready to light. What I need is some tinder. I've yet to meet anybody except really hardcore primitivists who don't take a toilet roll walking. So get some toilet roll, wrap it up. Tightly bind it all together. Then get your knife and slowly scratch away at it. What you're trying to do is make a sort of cotton wool like fluff of shredded tissue fibres, and that's going to catch the spark from my fire steel. Could use a match to set fire to that, just as good, but I prefer fire steel because, unlike matches, it doesn't get damp. It, it will, you can get it wet and scrape it, and it will still light. I have very few luxuries, but this is my biggest outdoor luxury. It's a cerium iron fire steel. A quick scrape, and it produces very hot sparks, which will quickly set fire to my toilet roll tinder. Put that underneath, and away it goes. Now I let it burn up for a little while. Quick blow, get it all going. This is where the, the practice comes in, knowing when to blow. And there's the grate put over the top. Now, whilst that fire is establishing itself and getting a bed of ashes to keep burning, I'm preparing what I want to cook. I'm going to have one saucepan full of boiling water to make tea and the other is some leftovers from home, which I'm just going to warm through. And really, it's just a matter of sitting and watching the sunset and occasionally throwing a little stick onto the fire. This is a short distance out of town, no great effort to walk here. After a very busy week, it's just the end to a, a nice relaxing day. 
I grabbed these sticks as I was coming up to the top of the hill. I mean, literally, it's just a stick here, a stick there, pick them up off the ground. You can see the, the water's beginning to boil now, so I'm going to find something to make tea. It's too late for hedge garlic, it's too early for yarrow, so I've got some nettles. I've got four or five nettle stalks, just pull off the stalk, stick the leaves wholesale into the boiling water, tamp them down and leave them to stew for five minutes to make some lovely luscious nettle tea. Strange that the nettle tea you buy from the shops tastes very sort of dank and bitter. When you make it from fresh nettles it has a lovely sweet aromatic flavour that you just can't get if you buy it in the shops. There we are, just about done. Now before I slowly savour my tea, I'm going to douse my embers in water. It's very important that you leave the site looking spotless. Now that begins by dousing your embers in water to completely put them out. And to make sure they're out, run your fingers over it, make sure there's no hot spots. If you come across a hot charcoal, just pour some more water over it. And whilst the water soaks in and the embers cool down and the soil cools down, I'll sit, drink my tea and watch the sunset. There we are, luscious nettle tea. Once they've been in the boiling water for a few seconds, the stings completely disappear, leaving with some lovely tea. Sunset, not a brilliant sunset, but a lovely airy sunset with clouds and birdsong. So I've scattered the coals to get rid of them into the grass and the hedgerow. Now I'm just neatening up the hole a little bit, take off the charred sides. Now put the turf in place, tamp it down and then before I go away I'll, I'll water it to make sure that the grass can keep growing and actually the, the embers will help fertilise it a little bit. And here you are, this is, I'm packed up ready to leave. You wouldn't know I've lit a fire there. End of the day, feeling refreshed, time to trudge home, start a new week. You can find the details online. I hope you build yourself a great and really get into the idea of using stick fires and all the wonderful joys of the outdoors.